Welcome. Welcome to Derbyshire. More specifically, the point where the River Derwent meets the River Trent. Why am I here? So I'm here once again to walk the Derwent Valley Heritage Way. And it's a 55 mile route starting from here at the confluence where the Derwent meets the River Trent, leading all the way up the course of the Derwent towards Lady Bower. So it finishes at a place called Heatherdean, which is right next to the Lady Bower Reservoir, just north of Bamford. So I've done this route before, around about, maybe about five or six years ago, but it was documented in audio form and not video. So yesterday I thought, why not? I'd come back, there's a okay weather window for three days and I've got three days before I've got to start back at work. So I thought, why not? Let's do it. So we're gonna pass some really interesting places along the way, some quite significant historical places. We're gonna pass through the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Derwent Valley Mills. We're gonna pass the, um, the Silk Mill at Derby. We're gonna walk along the Cromford Canal and we're gonna walk along the mill owned by, built by the legendary Sir Richard Arkwright. And that's just to name a few. We're going to pass a lot of interesting places along the way. Okay, so the weather's reasonable. I think we should just get on it. Let's do it. is here. That's the final section of the Trent and Mersey Canal that we're going to walk along. It's only around about two miles the uh, stretch from Derwent Mouth but we're now on the road so it'll be a little bit uninspiring for a while. Welcome back. So after leaving the Trent and Mersey Canal, we walked through Shardlow, passed through the village of Amberston, and now we've just rejoined the River Derwent, just south of Borowash. And it's a beautiful section, this. So we're now walking along the bridleway that runs into Derby. We're around about two miles out from the centre, but we'll be passing the Derby County football ground on the way to the bottom of the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site at the Silt Mill. So here we are in Derby at the Derby Silk Mill. Completed in 1722 for the Lom brothers and this was the first factory, the world's first factory, but the original building was destroyed by fire a couple of times so it isn't 100% original. The claim to fame for the original factory is also taken, it's a bit, bit disputed really, the mill at Cromford by Richard Arkwright. So it's a fascinating place. It's currently closed. It's already a museum, but they've got some lottery funding, I do believe, and they're currently renewing it. So I'd really recommend a visit to the Derby Silk Mill. It showcases Derby's industrial past and present. So it's really good. Around about three weeks ago, we had the poppies here. The poppies that were at the Tower of London 
I wasn't sure when they were leaving, but they've now gone. They're doing a short tour, but the um, designer of the poppies was from Derby. So just back there was the Handyside Bridge, um, built in 1877. And as we've now passed the silk mill, we're into the UNESCO World Heritage Site now for the Derwent Valley Mills. So there's going to be a lot of information boards along the way. So we're now wandering through Darley Park on the northern side of Derby. And uh, they're just dismantling a festival that took place here on the 3rd of September. It's now the 4th. And by the looks at the programme, I didn't really know anything about it, but it looks like it was a classical music uh, festival. So it looks like that was the main stage, and they've literally just, literally just folded it down. So welcome to Darley, a very picturesque part of Derby and behind me is the Abbey. So behind me is Darley Mill. It's actually a collection of four mills built by the Evans family. It is the most complete example of a mill along this section here, but it is no longer uh, a mill. It's now divided up into businesses and things like that. Although they have been preserved really well, you can't go in unless you have permission. Although I did interview the uh, manager of the mills some six years ago when I was doing a local history project. The audio for that will be in the description in the blog post. So we've now left Derby and we're wandering across what looks to be a bowling green. Um, it's a very well kept uh, lawn. It does look like a turf growing facility actually. And there's the giveaway. Welcome back. So we're just climbing up into the woods here in the village of Little Eton. We've come away from the main road and I must admit, after 14 miles of relatively flat terrain, my legs are thankful for the incline. Welcome back. So we've just passed through Peckwash Mill and you saw the chimney just there. That was completed in 1895 by Thomas Tempest and it was a corn mill and then it was a paper mill and the information that I've read that when that was finished, the tower in 1895, that was pretty much the end of the, uh, of the paper industry around here. Uh, at one point that mill was the only mill with four uh, working machines at any one time. Have a quick look online, it's, uh, it seems fascinating actually. Over the last 45 minutes to an hour, I've been walking along the hillside, climbing and falling. It's been quite a welcome break for the legs. And we're about to arrive in Belper. And in a moment I'll be meeting my friend Andy as well and he's going to walk with us to Cromford and then get the train back. So, I've met up with Andy and we're now walking down Long Row. And Long Row, this road here and also some of the streets around were built by Jedediah Strutt when um, he built the mill further down. It was very, very picturesque. Welcome. 
after leaving Belpo we've climbed up the uh, valley side a little bit which once again has been good for the legs. We're around about 20, 22 miles in at the moment and just down in the valley there is Ambergate. In a moment we're going to be dropping down, um, crossing over the road and joining the Cromford Canal. Welcome back. So I've been using the battery quite sparingly over the last um, hour or so. We've just stopped at the family tree uh, pub slash cafe and uh, had a bite to eat. And also, they let me charge my camera battery as well. <laughs> that is the house that you want, definitely. Okay, so we've just passed the Leewood pump house and that's basically to keep the water levels, or it was anyway, to keep the water levels topped up. It would pump water from the River Derwent down below and feed it into the canal. And the cylinder inside that moves with the steam generation, every time the pump moves up, that's 800 gallons of water, four tons. And it's just fantastic. So this is the High Peak Junction, it's where water used to meet rail. Um, various different things going backwards and forwards, down the canal, over the Peak District on the railway line. But the Cromford Canal is now a cycle trail along the side, and the High Peak Trail is now a cycle trail as well. Worth checking out, definitely. So this is it, this is the end of the Cromford Canal, where it meets the mill by the legendary Sir Richard Arkwright. So the canal goes all the way down to Ambergate, but it used to go all the way down to Langley Mill. And if you'd like to watch a video that I did tracing the original course, then I'll put that in the description as well. But while we're talking about the, the legendary Sir Richard Arkwright, um, he commissioned a house to be built and it's called Willersley Castle slash Willersley Hall. And I thought, as I'm walking quite a distance today and it's gonna to rain tonight, I've got all the camping stuff with me, but I thought, why not? Let's book a room there and uh, tick off another place that has association with uh, the Derwent Valley Mills. From the research that I've done, um, the home was designed or being built for Sir Richard Arkwright but he died in 1792 before the completion. So Richard Arkwright Jr. moved in in 1796 and the Arkwright family owned the house until 1922. And since then it was bought by the Christian Guild group of hotels who own it today. And I'm really hoping, <laughs> I'm not too dirty actually. I'm hoping I, I don't look too out of place. <laughs> I've just booked a quick um, single room, I think it was £34 with breakfast included, there's a swimming pool and everything like that. Uh, but you know what, after around about 27 miles today, I'm definitely ready for a good sleep and a hot shower. And it's going to rain all night as well, and <laughs> rain all tomorrow I think too. Okay, that's it. I'm checked in. And it's been a very long day. I'm looking forward to a sleep and a shower. It's only a very small room, single room, but that's all I need. It's all good. Um, we'll get some more shots in the morning over breakfast at the house and things like that. I'm quite looking forward to exploring more inside there because it's definitely got some history, that's for sure. Okay, so today was around about 27.5 miles and tomorrow should be shorter. The plan's evolving. I'm not quite sure where we're going to head to, but we're going to head north nonetheless. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. It's now 8 a.m. the following day. And I'm just walking down for breakfast. It's throwing it down, and the forecast says it's going to throw it down all day. But before that, let's get food and let's go and look inside the castle.
we're on the way, leaving Willersley Castle. I'm glad that I chose to stay there. I've seen it so many times passing through the area and at the top of the hill there on the High Peak Trail looking down or from Black Rocks. So I'm glad that I finally got to stay there. It looks like it's going to rain all day, but not a problem. We've got waterproofs. We'll see how far we get today. We've got another 23, I think, miles to the finish. So who knows, we might do it in one day. We've now arrived at Richard Arkwright's Cromford Mill. The original part of the mill was built in 1771 and it still stands today. And that is why this location can lay claim to fame as being the world's first factory, simply because it's still standing, whereas Derby Silk Mill was rebuilt. So right in the corner there is the first mill. And then we've got a chain or a complex of other buildings built later on. I would highly recommend a visit here. Over the last five or six years, there's been a lot of money spent and uh, there's some great exhibitions to learn about the mill and also learn about Sir Richard Arkwright himself. Sadly, we can't hang around today and visit any of the exhibitions. We've got a lot of miles to get in. And there's one more place that we can see before we leave the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site. So just on that very busy intersection there, up the hill was the main village of Cromford. A lot of the houses and pubs and things like that there built for the mill, for the mill workers. So here we are at Masson Mill, built in 1783 by Sir Richard Arkwright, and perhaps my favourite mill along the uh, Heritage Way here, simply because they have a museum, a working museum. As this mill was used up until fairly recently, they've got spinning machines, weaving machines, and it's absolutely fascinating. I highly recommend paying a visit because all the machinery is still working. They do demos and stuff like that. And there's great info about Sir Richard Arkwright and the industry. So the vast majority of the mill has been turned over to a shopping centre. Various different levels of shopping and also I believe at the bottom level there's a cafe overlooking the river. It's not open now or else I probably would go for a coffee but we've got miles to do so let's keep moving. So we've come to the end, the top end of the Derwent Valley Mills UNESCO World Heritage Site. There is a vast amount of history to learn along the way, so if you visit their website, you can pick out the places that I haven't visited and also go back and learn more about the places that we've seen. So all that's left now on the Derwent Valley Heritage Way is spectacular Peak District scenery, stately homes as we follow the river ever north towards Lady Bower. Welcome to Matlock Bath. It's like being beside the seaside without the sea. We do have the river though, the mighty River Derwent. I'm only around about 10 minutes by car from home here. And as you can imagine, we've visited this place a lot over the years. While I was growing up and in more recent times as well. It's really nice to come down here and come for a wander. Great things for the kids, there's a park and things like that down the way there. And it's a haven or a mecca for bikers. If the weather's nice or if it's a weekend, the place is rammed. We're about to leave the valley once again. It's time to get the legs working with a climb over High Tor.
So just behind me is the base station for the Heights of Abraham cable car. Another place that I'd recommend a visit to, although I haven't been there since I was about five years old. <laughs> I should really go again myself, I should take my own advice. There's another route that goes just below the summit and it's called Giddy Edge. If you've got more time, I would definitely give that a go. You're hugging against the cliff face and there's a rail to hold on to. It's quite a big drop, so not for the faint-hearted. So this is Matlock. I've stopped for a quick coffee break and then I'm going to keep moving along towards the peak rail and then following the peak rail new cycle trail towards Rowsley. So, I've arrived at Rowsley and it's now lunch time in the bus stop. That's the lunch break over. Time to keep moving. When the bus pulled up there was a lot of people on there and they thought it was quite funny watching me eat my food. <laughs> right, let's head that way. So we're on the way into Chatsworth now and just had to swerve around a rather large bull there. Welcome back. So we're wandering through the lush and green grounds of the Chatsworth estate and just over this last weekend they've had a festival so they're just packing away and they're clearing away and the main footpath that the heritage way follows was diverted so i've had to come around a little bit but as i got to the start of the clear up operation there were some hay bales there and it had been raining for hours so i thought as it had stopped raining i'd have a quick sit down and i almost fell asleep <laughs> almost fell asleep on the hay bales uh, but then a guy with a mini digger came to clear them away, so I had to move. But the plan is, I've been thinking about it, because it's been raining all day, um, I was going to split today up anyway. So we're going to stay at the YHA at Eam. So that means when we get to Calver, I'm going to head to Eam and then back in the morning to continue the route. So we've made it into Baslow, just as the rain has arrived again. So here we are in Calver, in another bus stop. So my girlfriend and my daughter have decided that they're going to come out for dinner this evening. So I'm going to wait here, they're going to pick me up, we're going to go for dinner I think, and then I'm going to go on to the YHA at Ian. Here 
here we are. This will do nicely. Definitely ready for a sleep, definitely ready for a shower as well. So I had a really good night's sleep last night, I had a really good breakfast, but now we've got to get back down to Calva and continue the walk. So I think the last time I stayed in a YHA was around about 11 years ago and uh, that was in Glen Nevis in Scotland. But I was very impressed. My initial plan was to stay at the one in Hathersage but my plan was evolving as I went on so there wasn't enough space but I'm really glad that there wasn't enough space because I really enjoyed the YHA at Ian. Great facilities, great breakfast, can't fault it. Although it's not on the Derwent Valley Heritage Way, Eam is a very beautiful village. The village was isolated from the plague in the 1660s and uh, there's a lot of history here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're back at Carver now. I got the bus down to save my legs a little bit. We've got 10 miles to go until the end now and then after that I'm going to be getting the bus and train, combination of the two, back to Chesterfield. Just behind me here is the mill stream feeding towards the old Carver Mill. It was a cotton spinning mill in the 1700s, but it's now been converted into private apartments. So there's the mill stream and in the distance there is the main river and just up ahead there is a weir We've just passed through the village of Froggart and we've left the river once again. Froggart lends its name to the edge in the background there. Froggart, Kerber and Baslow Edge. It's really amazing how over the last literally five days it seems to have gone from a rather wet, admittedly summer, to autumn straight away. The trees seem to know and it's changed within the space of a few days. Here we go again. We've had about 45 minutes of reasonable sunshine this morning and it's raining again now. So it's time to uh, batten down the hatches once again. So we're back down beside the river once again. In the distance is the village of Hathersage, where I had kind of planned that I might stay last night, but I was glad that I stayed at Ian. It was good. As the rain had stopped, for a moment anyway, I thought I'd have a quick break by the stepping stones here. My daughter and I crossed them about two months ago on the white to dark peat route.
Thankfully the rain has stopped again for a while and we're drawing ever nearer to Lady Bower. In the background there we've got Bamford Edge. Bamford Village is just down that way. So this is the Thornhill Trail and it's an old railway line that was used during the construction of the reservoirs. So here we are at Lady Bower. I'm wandering along the dam wall at the moment and the River Derwent is appearing out of the bottom there. The um, Derwent continues on up to Swain's Grieve at its source. So there's the Lady Bower Reservoir, there's the Derwent, there's the Howden, and then into the top of the Howden, the Derwent flows in. And that is around about 16 or so miles from here now. So if we had more time, if I'd got four days, then we'd go to the source. But we, come, we came here to walk the Derwent Valley Heritage Way and we've nearly finished. All we've got to do is do the small section now to Heatherdean. We've made it. We've come to Journey's End and it's been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. An enjoyable 55 miles. I'll let you know exactly how far it was according to my GPS. I'll put some info on screen now about um, ascent and things like that and I'll, I'll break the individual days up as well and give you info about how far I did each day. But you can do it all in one go. You can do it in sections, but I'd highly recommend it. There's lots of great history to see along the way and it's a really interesting route. Okay, so I'm gonna get the bus back to Chesterfield now, I think. First, I'm gonna to go to the Yorkshire Bridge Inn for a celebratory pint and possibly some food. Okay, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.